Jahren. Hello, this is Bjorn Akeson, and we are in Amsterdam for the Future Sun of Egypt 300 celebration at Club Escape, and you are with Kidsun. So, Bjorn, what are your thoughts on tonight? Um, I'm very excited. There's a lot of people, and, and there's been a big hype, and uh, from the looks of it, it's, it's already packed, so it's going to be a perfect night. I know you're good friends with Fila, too. How did you guys get in touch in, in the beginning? Uh, we started talking online. We had um, uh, a mutual friend from Egypt. Uh, we just started talking, and I started sending him my music, uh, which he started playing in his sets. And uh, it started off being on side tracks, and then um, I started sending him more and more music. And then I signed, uh, sent him a track called Perfect Blue, and then I started signing tracks with him after that. So we just kept on building our, our relationship and started working together, basically. How do you look at Perfect Blue today? Because that did a lot of stuff, not only for you, but for the scene as well, right? Yeah, it was kind of a surprise because when I finished the track, I was so sick of it that I thought people would be like, ah, this is not a good track. But it ended up doing pretty well, and uh, I still play it from time to time. But um, it has an, an old sound, but it, it, it's nice to play at the end of the sets, really. Yeah. Another massive track is Painting Pyramids. How did that track come about? Do you remember from the beginning? Um... I was playing with a beat and then uh, the melody kind of just appeared and then um, I kind of finished the track pretty early and then I uh, thought to myself, you know, this is supposed to be this easy and then I got more ideas and I uh, started working, building in more elements like the, um, the flute and uh, the vocals um, from a girl from Bahrain uh, live recorded. So yeah, that's um, what it turned into in then. Is it always that easy to, to sit down and produce? Uh, no, it's it's really hard, you know. It's it's um, you have to sit a lot, and many days you sit there and work and work, and nothing constructive happens. Um, um, it just happens once in a while when you have that, that moment where you just feel like, yeah, yeah, this is the track, this is right. Yeah. What do you start with uh, when you sit down and start to produce, say, an original track? What comes first, is it beats or melody? I always had that concept of, of having the track being based around the melody so the melody could carry the track itself. Um, so I start with the melody, but now these days it's, it's, it's different. I can start with a beat or the melody or um, just bass lines. It, it varies a lot, but mostly it's the melody, yeah. But painting pyramids and then moving forward, you, cre you produced Gunsmoke and now Breathe. You have changed your sound a little bit. Yeah, um, after producing Uplifting Trance for almost 10 years, you know, you get kind of tired of the sound, you, you've been there, done that, and it's time to move on, and I think that's a natural thing as being a human being, you need to move move along and, and try new things, get new challenges, so uh, this current sound that I'm working on, it's it's for me it's more exciting, and, and the crowd get, gets more exciting when I drop it live, so it's a direction I'm going to pursue for sure. You're still keeping the energy. Yeah, yeah, that's, I guess that's, that will always be there. If we go back almost 10 years uh, and talk about Havana, Havana, that's one of my all-time favorite tracks, still, after so long. How did that track come about? You did it with um, uh, Andreas Lindell, right? Yes. Um, we've been in contact for a long time, and uh, I was working on a track. It, it was, like, really uplifting first, um, but it had the guitar hook and the the pads and, and the atmosphere. So I sent it to him and he was like, hmm, well, it's kind of too uplifting, but I have an ID for doing a track um, that's more towards the, the solar stone sound that was uh, pretty hot at the moment, um, solar stone solar coaster. So we went to make a track in that direction and I think it, yeah, it turned out pretty well. The funny thing is, I know you guys had a hard time signing it, right? Yeah, we sent it to all the big labels, uh, Lost Language, that was big at the time, uh, Black Hole, um, Armada, well, pretty much all the big labels, but they, they liked the track, but they, in the end, you know, they didn't believe in it. Turn it down, so we have to sign it on a, a brand new label called Trans Revolution Recordings. Um, and once it got signed and promoted, everyone played it from Tiesto to Armin to Ferro Chorus. So it was a huge, huge success, so um, big record labels are not always right about what to sign. Do you have any other tips uh, to uh, new and upcoming pro uh, producers right now? Yeah, do your own thing. Um, believe in yourself. Do what you like. Uh, don't 
try to copy someone else, don't do something that you believe people will appreciate. Just follow your own heart, do your own thing, and that's where you will be happy in the end.